What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So since the last video, we've had a bunch of info come out about the end game. We've had a trailer. And now that we kind of have a better view of what to expect from Anthem, I want to look forward and see what we're going to be really getting into once the game comes out. Well, for some people on the 15th and others on the 22nd. So to kick things off, previously I talked about Anthem's loot. Now it felt good to get loot. My own personal experience playing the game, it did feel good to get loot when you or killing enemies or finishing a section of a stronghold opening a chest and you got loot the loot looked good when it dropped it sounded good it was satisfying to pick up but a problem that i'm foreseeing has to do with an issue that i brought up before about the way anthem has this loot table set up so anthem has a global loot table meaning that no matter what activity that you're doing you'll get whatever loot is in the game so whether it's you're killing an enemy in free play, or you're killing an enemy in a stronghold, or you're killing an enemy in a story mission, you can get any loot in the game. The only thing that separates the type of loot or the rarity of the loot is the difficulty that you're playing on. So essentially, you're playing the same content, but different difficulties, and that determines the rarity of your loot. Some people may say, I don't see an issue with that. Here's the issue with that. If I'm playing Anthem and I'm playing a stronghold, let's say the Tyrant Mine stronghold, and I'm killing a big spider bug and I'm getting loot. If I'm getting loot that I can get anywhere else, but it just depends on the difficulty of whatever I'm playing, then why would I play the Tyrant Mine stronghold? You can say, oh, well, it's a challenging activity and you have a higher chance to get you know, better loot. Yeah, but I can get that better loot doing anything. I could possibly not ever touch the Tyrant Mine Stronghold if I don't like it, just because I can get whatever's in the game doing any activity, right? So if I just like free play, I'll just play free play. If there's a difficulty tier setting for free play, I'll set it to the highest and just play free play and just grind because there's nothing significant about doing any particular activity to get a piece of gear. And that's a problem. If you play a game like The Division or Destiny, right, and you fight a particular enemy, you want to get some type of trophy from that enemy, right? That was something that was said in both of those games. When you fight a particular enemy or you complete a certain activity, you want some type of trophy to represent that activity, right? Something to represent that, hey, I defeated this boss or I did this activity or I achieved this accomplishment to validate your playtime. And it doesn't seem like Anthem has those things. Now, it does seem from the end game trailer that Anthem is gonna have a variety of loot, right? And that's something that a lot of people were asking about because a lot of people were saying that the loot looks very generic. A lot of the loot that you get at lower tiers is the same loot that you get at higher tiers with just better abilities, inscriptions, effects, and things like that. So, you know, that, in itself is another issue because are we gonna get enough exclusive items to higher rarities or are we gonna just get better equipment at higher rarities it's something to look at because if you're playing right and you get the same auto rifle to lower difficulty then you get the same thing at a higher difficulty it's kind of like you're just grinding for better effects and abilities and perks and things like that and does that really warrant enough playtime like yes you can customize the skins and you know stuff like that but does it really feel genuine do you like i don't know if i would feel good about completing an activity at a lower tier and then doing one at a higher tier and just getting the same weapon that's just better i don't know how i feel about that so i'm curious to see when the full game comes out maybe they're keeping it you know tight to the chest and not telling us but i'd like to see are there weapons and armor and things like that that are exclusive to higher difficulties, higher tiers, or are we just getting the same stuff? Another thing that a lot of people were talking about was longevity. That's something that I was talking about as well, that I don't see the longevity lasting. Now, they've come out and said that they'll be supporting this game 
long after you're finished with the main campaign. Long after the game is launched, they're gonna be supporting this game with free content. They put out a content schedule, you know, laying out all the bits of content that we're gonna get after we finish the story and stuff like that to keep us wanting to keep playing the game. And the way that they describe the end game, you know, I'm kind of intrigued. It, it does seem interesting. So the way that they laid it out is that what you're doing in the beginning of the game is you're failing, right? You're doing something and you fail it. And it basically motivates you because it's like, hey, you failed at this end game thing and now you have to grind your way back up to complete that end game thing once again at, i'm assuming at the end of the campaign right so it kind of validates you grinding to get better gear and stuff like that to get stronger so you can defeat whatever it is that you you lose it in the beginning which is pretty cool right and then after you defeat that you're continuing to try to grind to get stronger because there's going to continue to be more and more stronger end game activities coming down the pipeline. So that's essentially like what they're laying out. The reasons why you're gonna wanna, you know, keep grinding into the end game. So we'll see how that works out. It sounds cool. Another thing that I've talked about is Anthem's story. So Anthem is being developed with story at the center of the player's journey. So when the game comes out, I'm not sure if we know exactly how long the story is going to be. I don't think that's been confirmed as of yet, but I'd assume that the story would be somewhere around 30, 40 hours um, for a looter shooter, right? I'm not expecting like a long 50, 60 hour story. When the story comes out and we play through it, once we've completed it, if you look at the game, what you're left with is three strongholds, free play, and contracts. That's it. Now, a lot of people have shown their concern with that because essentially what you're saying is you have those sets of activities and the only thing that varies them up, you know, anything, the only thing that changes things up is the difficulty. So now it's like, do these activities, but do them with higher difficulties. And it's already been shown that higher difficulties only yield enemies with bigger health bars, stronger shields. There's no real mechanical changes to any of these activities, right? Like seemingly there's no real surprise to the activity. If you've done it once, you've done it twice, no matter what the difficulty is, you've seen it all. Because nothing else is gonna change except for the health of the enemies. They're gonna get stronger and harder to kill. But I don't know how that adds on to challenge down the line. Now, I played most of the content on hard and they've said that hard wasn't hard enough. I didn't think it was that difficult either. So they're changing, they're tweaking the difficulty of the hard you know, mode. So we'll see how that feels. But still, you know, the same point remains that even if you're grinding in the game and the difficulties are the only thing that changes things up, is that content gonna get tired really quickly? Is me doing the Tyrant Mind Stronghold for the fourth and fifth time gonna be satisfying just because I'm getting loot? And there's only two other you know, strongholds for us to do at launch at least, so is the content really gonna hold people's attention? The end game grind is very important to these looter shooter games. And you could even see with games like The Division that are coming out and people are playing that now, that they're saying that the Division end game is far superior to anything else that's out right now. So, you know, we're gonna have to see about games like Anthem, games like Destiny that have been around for four or five years now. Destiny hasn't even truly figured out, you know, it's end game grind. Like it doesn't have one set end game that has worked and that everyone's in favor of, right? Destiny's still evolving. So the good thing about games like Anthem, Destiny, and Division are that they're live service games essentially, and they can continue to get updates down the line after launch and continue to support the player base based on feedback and stuff like that. So, you know, although, you know, there's videos out there and people are talking about what they like, what they don't like. The one thing to keep in mind is that if you continue to give your feedback, seemingly these developers are listening. So your voice is important. When it comes to games that I love to play, like Destiny, I enjoyed The Division, but I didn't play too much of it. But I know that the player base who sticks with these games, they give their feedback and changes do happen in these games. So it's the same thing with Anthem. Anthem is a new IP. It's going to struggle, right? This idea that the game is, is going to be far superior to everything else. We've been there. We've seen games that have come out and tried to do this thing 
and be better. But essentially, they still fall into the same tree. They all suffer the same way. And Anthem is gonna have its bumps in the road, right? And maybe the end game, and maybe the story is lackluster, and maybe there's not enough loot variety, something. But there's gonna be some type of issue. And you have to expect it, right? You can't look at Anthem and say it's gonna be perfect, because it's not. There's a few red flags out already. But a good thing is that the developers have been really transparent on Twitter, forums, their videos and stuff. They're giving the information. So it's up to you to go out there and soak it in, right? Because you can't say that they didn't tell us or they lied or this, that, and the third because I can tell you personally, I follow a lot of the devs on Twitter, follow the page itself. I see all the videos, I see the tweets and all that stuff. I see the threads and they're talking, they're giving info. We'll see how it goes though. I'm looking forward to Anthem. I don't know if you guys are, but if you are looking forward to Anthem, let me know down below in the comment section. And be sure to like and subscribe, guys. Turn on those notifications, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.